nervous about it in a couple of ways. I mean, obviously there's like the practical COVID ways. I'm also just nervous about it because this is maybe the longest I've gone without putting myself out there in front of an audience. This is In The Loop, I'm Christian Bryant. Tonight, we're raising the curtain on Broadway's return. It's been a rough year for these performers. Governor Cuomo's ban means that Broadway will not be able to hold shows. All performances are suspended through April 12th. The coronavirus pandemic is forcing the lights to remain out on Broadway until at least June 7th. When doors first closed back in March of 2020, more than 95,000 full-time employees suddenly found themselves out of work. And that's only talking about those tied directly to Broadway in New York City. During the pandemic, actors found themselves doing things like voiceover work, virtual performances, and starting their own businesses to make ends meet. In 2019, Broadway had 14.6 million people in the crowd and saw $1.8 billion from ticket sales. Safe to say, that was not the case last year. But the stage is set for a return tomorrow, and they're hoping to get that momentum going again. The thing is, Broadway's return comes with COVID still on the stage, so to speak, and there's currently some serious concerns about variants. After all, Broadway brings in people visiting from all over the world. Before COVID, 65% of the audience for these shows were tourists. We'll have to see how many of them are willing to make the trek to the Big Apple for their favorite musicals. So we wanted to know how exactly will the show go on? The Broadway League, which operates all 41 Broadway theaters in New York City, says that vaccinations are required for cast, crew, and the audience through October. If you're a theater lover, that means you're part of the theater loving community. And so, um, you know, let's be a part of that community and do our best to get rid of COVID. People attending the shows also have to wear masks, except when eating or drinking, so much like the movie theaters. Kids under 12 or anyone with a medical condition that keeps them from getting vaccinated must provide a negative PCR test instead. So they are really running a pretty tight ship and the guidelines seem to be working. Hamilton producers who currently have three casts in three different cities say they've only seen one breakthrough case and they're ready for Broadway to officially reopen. The Actors' Equity Association, a union that represents actors and stage managers, has also worked to implement new ways to make sure Broadway is as safe as possible by creating a new position for crews called the COVID Safety Manager. This person handles things like monitoring and enforcing guidelines, sanitizing, and contact tracing. There are still some concerns about how things will go. The Broadway League is planning to reevaluate COVID protocols sometime this month to see what the best next steps are. So a bit earlier, we heard from Ethan Slater, an actor who plays SpongeBob in SpongeBob SquarePants, the musical. And they say the perfect job does not exist. Actors like Ethan are cautiously optimistic about getting back to the stage. And obviously they are an essential part of Broadway's reopening at this point in the pandemic. Newsy's Casey Mendoza has more. For the first time in over a year, Broadway in New York reopens this week to full capacity. I am so excited for everyone to experience live theater again. We're doing all that we can to bring live performing back, and it does. It takes, it's, it's a two-way street. It's an audience and a, a performing company, and we look forward to that, to that marriage once more. Actor Derek Klenna was working on Jagged Little Pill when the pandemic shut down theaters across the country. It was so unexpected leading up into the shutdown. I, I actually had COVID the last four performances leading up into the show, shutdown. I didn't know at the time. The Tony-nominated show set to the music of Alanis Morissette returns on October 21st, with rehearsals starting again later this month. We're well on our way. It looks like uh, a large majority of our original cast is able to come back to the show, which is very exciting. After a year off stage, Klenna says the pandemic shows just how resilient artists in the industry are. I think it kind of pushed everyone's reset button and, and really emphasized why we do what we do and what about it we love. 
I never thought my world could end. Actor Ethan Slater is best known for his Tony-nominated role as SpongeBob in the SpongeBob musical, and his first live performance back will be at Times Square for the Broadway Buskers concert series. And I'm nervous about it in a couple of ways. I mean, obviously there's like the practical COVID ways, but I'm also just nervous about it because this is maybe the longest I've gone um, without putting myself out there in front of an audience. And There was that like awkward turtle in the room of people being like, do we remember how to do this? How's everybody feeling? And I always get like dreadfully nervous before every performance, but there's something in the practice of it that makes it a little easier. So we'll see. When theaters reopen to full capacity on September 14th, audiences will be masked and required to show proof of vaccination. Actors, crews, and theater staff are also required to be vaccinated. We're obviously taking all of the safety precautions very, very seriously to create a safe space where people can allow themselves to release and relax. And people have been out of work and, it, and it's, it's really tough. And like, we need to find ways that it's safe to go back to work. Casey Mendoza, Newsy. Folks, we've reached the point of the show where I'd like to bring in our good friend, your good friend at this point, uh, Newsy's Casey Mendoza. Casey, um, we're going to be talking a bit about the Broadway reopening. And of course, I don't mind embarrassing myself a good bit on this show. So I understand you have a trivia game for me to play. Is that correct? That is. We're flipping the script on Explain This this week. Okay. Well, lay it all out for me then. So I've got three uh, hopefully pretty quick, possibly easy questions on um, the Broadway reopening. All of the answers are about um, Broadway this year or about Broadway during the pandemic. So are you ready? No, I'm not. But, <laughs> I mean, let's get to it, really. <laughs> Just wanted to be honest with you and our audience. So, I mean, hit me with the first question. <laughs> so my first question is, three of the most successful Broadway shows are among the first to welcome back audiences uh, following the, you know, more than year-long shutdown. Can you name at least one of those musicals? Um, I don't know why this is on my mind, but uh, is Oklahoma one of them? It is not one of the three. Um, the three we're looking for were Hamilton, uh, uh, Wicked, right, and The Lion King. Hamilton, Wicked, and The Lion King. Why didn't I go with Hamilton? I mean, Hamilton <laughs> is like... <laughs> That would have been the smart answer. So the next one, there are a lot more answers. You will only need to name one. But a lot of the productions coming back this fall were originally cut short when the pandemic hit over a year ago. Can you name at least one returning show? Hamilton. Hamilton. <laughs> that was maybe the wrong one. So but Hamilton um, is coming back this year. But it did not, it was not cut short by the pandemic oh. last year. Um, so sorry. But like some cool ones that are coming back uh, Jagged Little Pill, which stars Derek Klena, who I interviewed for my story. Hades Town made a big splash last year, but was cut short. Aladdin, another Disney classic, cut short by the pandemic last year. Okay, I think you're gonna get this one. Uh, fingers crossed. I wouldn't be so sure. <laughs> What popular cartoon movie did TikTok users turn into a musical virtually? I know this one. Ratatouille. Ratatouille was the one. Uh, I remember there's there's a song that's like, Bring me a ratatouille. Out of all my dreams. There, there weren't a lot of cool things uh, <laughs> during that that portion of the pandemic and that was one of the one of the bright spots watching people come together and have a little fun with ratatouille of all things <gasps> casey mendoza thank you for giving me an opportunity to embarrass myself yet again on itl and i hope you come back so we can do this all over again always happy to be a part of the show 
All right, I think I'm done embarrassing myself for now. When you're back, we'll tell you how young climate activists are turning up the heat on politicians ahead of the UN's climate change conference. 